Hey guys, what's up? It's Low. Welcome back to another episode of Low Nose. Now, it's experimentation time here in the Low Nose Lab, and we're going to take a $2,500 microphone preamp and connect it to this woolly $32 budget studio microphone. Can the big time, big name, big money equipment improve on this cheap $32 microphone? Eh, we'll see. Don't go anywhere. Up next. All right, so I recently did a review on this microphone. It's the newer NW700. All right, and whoops. And like I said before, it's a $32 budget studio uh, microphone. And it doesn't sound too bad. It's a little harsh on the mids, um, but you know, you get what you pay for. It's $32. Yeah, I was kind of surprised with what it can do, and, and I wasn't too not surprised with the things it couldn't do, but overall for $32, it was a nice, decent microphone. Uh, it, it was a good enough microphone. My only big huge gripe with this microphone was the high noise floor on this microphone. But enough without this microphone. Go ahead and check the review. And also go ahead and subscribe on my channel so you don't miss any other videos like this as far as the microphone reviews and other cool stuff. All right, so the, the big name on this video is connecting the $2,500 preamp to this microphone. And the preamp that we're using is a big time, big name, pretty expensive preamp. It's the Avalon vt 737 sp now guys this preamp is this preamp is no joke when it, if you go to a professional music studio um a scene or maybe a voiceover or voice acting or whatever whatever kind of main studio where they're actually pumping out some serious music or stuff or dialogue movies or whatever you will find this piece of equipment within that studio this is a serious um, piece of equipment. Now, what are microphone preamps for those of you who don't know? Normally when you're just recording, well right now, I'll let you know that I am recording, I just left a mark, okay. Um, I'm recording off the Zoom H6, what else is new? And what's good about the Zoom H6 is that it records the microphone for what it is. It doesn't add any additional characteristics or elements to the signal of the microphone. It just records the microphone as is. With a preamp, um, and this one in particular is a preamp channel strip. But preamps, you get preamps because they add a certain kind of characteristic. They add a kind of, uh, sort of like a warmness to the signal of the microphone that you're using. And preamps are normally really good for condenser microphones because they add a nice, nice little noun, round, warm signal to the signal of the microphone. Yeah, so that, that's what the preamps are normally used for. And you've heard it, man. A lot of popular voiceover actors have used this same exact microphone. You know, I'm not going to toot my own home. I mean, maybe I am a little popular. Whatever. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> it's a popular preamp. That's that's what I'm trying to say. Is okay. So before we get started with the test, let me just introduce you the features of the microphone. I'm I'm sorry of the preamp before we get started. So you're going to have the preamp. Um, this is what drives the tubes within the preamp. That's what adds a certain characteristics to whatever signal that you're adding to. Preamps can be used for microphones or instruments as well, or you can actually use it to send complete mixes through there to kind of color it. All right. Um, like I said, a micro line input, you can use that for instruments. It has a high pass frequency, really common, kind of take out the low end um, of unwanted signals. A high gain phase 48 phantom volts and also a high high pass or low cut filter threshold for your compression compressor tack release you have an option to throw the eq before your compression um, i normally throw my eq when i'm when i'm editing and post i normally throw my eq before my compressor so you actually do that with here in a preamp compressor you actually have a meter um and you also have a four band a four band eq and also you have um the actually cues that you can mess with so you can actually hit a certain frequency that's what these are here on the bottom i'm not going to play with that you know it's yeah no 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 no. we'll just we, we just want to hear what this what the preamp can do for this microphone um and how it can improve and just sound it let's let's see what kind of qualities it can add to this microphone all right so bass low mids high mids treble and of course the output and then here we go engage an equalizer and everything else as well and that is our preamp all right so before further ado, you are actually hearing right now the sample of this microphone because I like I showed you before the H6. This is what the microphone sounds like. Sorry, sounds like. All right, so now that you have a good sen sense of what this microphone sounds like, let us now engage the Avalon. Um, before that, let me just um, I'm going to use I'm going to say a certain phrase and we'll keep doing that. We'll keep doing that within the the other adjustments, or we'll do it for the final adjustments on the Avalon. So I'm going to start right now. Whoops, sorry about that. You like my headphones? They're pretty cool. Okay, here we go. 
What did you do to die today at a minute or two to two? A thing distinctly hard to say, but harder still to do. For they'll beat a tattoo at 20 to two, a rat a tat a tat a tattoo, and the dragon will come when he hears the drum. At a minute or two to two today? At a minute or two to two. Okay, all right, so that is, that is our, our, our baseline sample for this microphone, as well as other things. Well, let's jump straight into uh, the Avalon, and let's see what, how we can make this microphone sound. Here we go. Okay, so we are ready to go. Let's turn this bad boy on. It looks kind of pretty, doesn't it? Nice little blues. It is a limited edition. A limited edition. This normally comes in kind of like a uh, like a silver with kind of like a red light. I love the black and with the black and the, the blue accent lights. Had to get that. All right, so normally with preamps, you got to give it some time for the tubes to warm up. So normally when you turn it on, you kind of got to wait for a while. And then they do, they actually recommend don't use it for like another half an hour. Give it more time to actually warm up. So normally if I even have like a sense of, okay, well, I'm going to, uh, I know I got to use this. I got to use this. So I'm, let me just turn it on. I'll probably take a shower or whatever. And then I'll come back to the preamp. Okay, so you just got your first test of what this preamp actually sound like. We are connected directly into the preamp. I am no longer using the Zoom H6. And we are on the preamp right now with everything baseline. Let's take a look at the preamp. Right now, my preamp game is at zero. No kind of coloration. We're just using the pure the sound of the preamp of the tubes hitting this microphone right now and tell you the truth i do hear a bit of a difference it has more of like a a nice warmer fuller tone to it the compression is all the way it's one we might as well have it at off uh the threshold i'm going to leave at 30 um, because that's just fine it, it, it's it's it also affects actually the um, the noise floor picks up so that this actually works nice for my office where it is right now and the attack and release i will leave that alone as well because that will work those were those settings work work fine for voiceovers um, and I have the high pass filter not turned on because we want to see what this microphone sounds like on its own, just the microphone and the, pre and, uh, the preamp with nothing else engaged. The, the bass, the, the EQ, everything is turned off and that's how, it's, that's how it is. All right, so let's start off again um, for comparison's sake. Oh, and I am also recording this within Pro Tools as well so we can take a look at how the waveforms are being affected as we manipulate the Avalon. All right, so let's go with our, our test again. What did you do today today at a minute or two to two? A thing distinctly hard to say, but harder still to do. For they'll beat a tattoo at 20 to two, a rat a tat 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 tattoo. And the dragon will come when he hears the drum. At a minute or two to two today? At a minute or two to two. All right. All right, so just just coming off that, that actually sounds pretty good. But what's happen, what happens when we engage the preamp now? Let's see what happens here. What the preamp's going to do, it's going to drive the tubes of the actual preamp and we actually get more of a louder sound with actually some more coloration or characteristic into it. Now, normally I use this preamp with my Sennheiser MKH 416, and I normally like to leave it around 35. Uh, yeah, probably around 35. And actually sounds really good right now. So this is 35 on, and now this is, whoops, oh, and now this is 35 off. You actually hear a bit of a difference. Um, since this microphone is a little bit noisy, um, it brings up a little of the noise floor. It's just there's just some kind of inherent line noise to it, but I'm gonna leave it right there to 35. That's how we will start off our test, and let let's start engaging this thing. We we know how it sounds like without it. We we just did a pre-test before anything. Now let's start engaging these things. Let's let's go ahead and turn our compressor. Okay, and now we can actually hear a little compressor being added. And let's start let's start going up on the compressor. And I can see as we go up, you can hear my voice actually flattening right there. And I'll actually show you the, what actual waveforms look like. They go from high and all of a sudden they're just kind of crushed little signals. You actually hear it in my voice. The compressor is just being affected way too much. I think I'm gonna settle with maybe, you know, it also does have that radio sound too, you know? Hey guys, what's up? I am on the radio. Oh yeah, sorry about that. All right, so I'm going to settle between three and four. That's probably going to be a ratio of 3.5 um, to four. It actually sounds pretty good in my head right now. Okay, all right, so it's it's in my head, my phone's right now. Guys, let me know how it sounds like to you. It's actually sounding fuller, richer. It's, it's a $25, $25, a $2,500 25 preamp. Sounds like it's doing its work on this microphone. All right, so let's let's engage this a little more. Um... Let's bring in the preamp. And like I said, I like to engage the preamp before my compressor. So let's put my EQ before my compressor. And also I'm going to engage the low pass filter because I want to take out those unwanted low end signals from my voice as well. Um, uh, it's not like I have any competing elements of, of computers running on in the background. Uh, well, I, I do, but they're actually really quiet. 
Um, okay, and so that this is how it sounds like right now. I have the compressor engaged, the high pass engaged, and now I will go ahead. Oh, and I, I need to engage the equalizer. All right, so now my equalizer is engaged, but everything is flat. So I'm going to go ahead and let's just say I'm going to add a little bass to my voice. How's that sounding? Well, actually, let, let's go ahead and go extreme. This is um, that's four. Now we'll just add a complete. Oh my gosh, you can hear that. That is nothing but bass. If I go and I roll it off now that all the bass is completely wiped off from my voice. So let's let's go ahead. Let's let's do a little right right below four. We'll, we'll go ahead and do that. Um, now this this um, microphone is a little bit high in the mid range by default, and that's just a characteristic of this microphone. Whether if that's the way they actually wanted it to be, or is it because maybe of the cheap parts that are used to it. Usually the cheaper the parts, the higher the microphone's gonna sound. Um, a la uh, um, like a headset microphone. You know how it's like it how it just sounds like really high? No, no, not not that high, but that, that that's usually like the cheaper you get, the higher the signal sounds. Um, all right, so we're gonna roll off just a little bit on the high mids because I want I want to bring down that high crunchiness from the microphone. But we're gonna add a little brightness to it, a little intelligibility by engaging the treble. All right, so this is where I am right here, and I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going I'm to give you a sense of when I go all the way, this is how it sounds like when it's all the way. All right, but we're not going to use too much. We're just probably going to go maybe about right here, and it's actually sounding pretty good to me right now. I would, I would probably roll off on the bass, but, you know, we're just kind of using it for effective, um, effective use so you actually get a sense of what it's doing. And I'll do one more test. Um, everything's engaged. What did you do today today at a minute or two to two? A thing distinctly hard to say, but harder still to do. For they'll beat the tattoo at 20 to two, a rat -ta 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 tattoo. And the dragon will come when he hears the drum. Maybe. At a minute or two to two today? At a minute or two to two. Okay. All right. So that's sounding pretty good. Um, me personally, if I were to do this, I would probably take off the bass. It is sounding a little too bassy. Um, normally, rule of thumb, guys, if you're if you're ever EQing, um, if you're just starting off in EQing, if you can hear the bass, you've probably added too much. Just keep that in mind. It may, it may sound good and awesome in the beginning, but you always want to put less than we actually can hear. All right, so I'm going to roll off on the bass just a little bit, and I'll actually, let me actually go the other way around. Let me reduce some bass because in my headphones, they just sound super bassy. All right, so I will try it again. What did you do to die today at a minute or two to two? A thing distinctly hard to say, but harder still to do. For they'll beat the tattoo at 20 to two, a rat -ta 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 -two. And the dragon will come and he hears a drum at a minute or two to two today at a minute or two to two. Scene. Okay. All right, so guys, that is the Avalon VT737SP. Let, let me turn everything off to get you, so you can get a sense. This, you heard of it. This this one engaged. Now let's turn off the EQ. This is it without the EQ with the EQ off. Let's turn off the compression. This is with the compression off. Oh my God, what a difference! Do you hear that? Or did, yeah, do you hear that? Or do you not hear that? EQ off. All the filter off. And now I'm just left with a preamp, and it's just sounding harsh. And that and that nice buttery tone is completely gone. Okay, let me let me put it back a bit. Put, let's put it back on. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay, and we're back. Okay, wow. Okay, yeah. So, all right. So, the did did the twenty five hundred dollar Avalon microphone preamp save the day on the newer NW seven hundred, making it as best as it could sound? Well, for twenty five hundred dollars, it better well, damn, should have been done. Did, yeah. And I think it was a successful job as far as showing how it can improve the microphone. Imagine if I actually had a real good microphone. How? Oh wow. Actually, I do. I think I might plug in that TLM 49. Let me know in the comments below if you want me to connect the TLM 49 to it to this and kind of mess around with it as well. And I actually I actually have, I actually have an Aphex tooth Aphex 230 as well. That is like a huge like a radio compressor um, preamp. Um, let me know in the comments below if you want me to try that as well on any of my microphones um, that you might be curious. I've got the NT Rode NT1A. I've got the Audio Technica 4040. I've got the newer NW700. I've got the Neumann TLM49, and I also have the Sennheiser MKH416. If any of those may interest you, and you want to hear them on the Avalon or the Aphex 230, let me know in the comments below, and I will go ahead. I will do a test for you, and kind of satisfy that curious itch. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of those videos in the future. If you found this video helpful or liked it, go ahead, please leave a like. If you didn't like it and you thought it was complete utter trash, then 
leave a like or just like whatever. Um, until next time, guys. Oh, and like I said before, go ahead, please leave, um, go ahead, leave some comments down below. Let's get a conversation going. You got any questions? Hit me up. Also, social media, low nose, uh, sort of Facebook, Instagram, and Twitters. I am all there. Like I said, guys, let's have a conversation. Guys, this is it for that. The $2,500 microphone preamp saved the day. I sort of think so. Did it? <laughs> Let me know. Until next time, guys, I will see you in the next video. Bye.